All right, so let me get everybody caught up on the recent escalation of this grudge race between my brother and Mark at A1. Now, Mark's attorney has been pushing him pretty hard to lock in a 30-day punk-out clause, but they've run into a serious problem. Mark's old 55 has come down with a case of COVID, and it literally struggled to get itself up on the trailer. Eventually, I had to break it to Mark that his big block 55 is in danger of losing to a stock Model A3 window coupe. But I promised Mark that I'd bring the car out to my shop and we'd go over it and see if I can't figure out what exactly is wrong. This led to a conference call down at the parts store with his legal counsel, which I think left everybody with more questions than answers. You noticed Mark's attorney asked about everything but tire pressure? Seems like familiar Jimmy Dale fashion. I gave the car a good once over and adjusted some things on the carburetors and then took it down to the filling station to put some Cam 2 in it, which made the car run much better but brought out a more serious problem. <laughs> oh. Once I got Mark's old 427 to run halfway decent, the next problem was the clutch, which sticks to the floor pan every time you shift gears. So I've come down to see Mark this morning and go over all the details of what I found. What the hell are you doing back here? I'm making my job. Making hydraulic hoses? Yeah. You mean mistaking no. hydraulic hoses? I am better, in, to my opinion, and better at making hydraulic hoses than anybody else in this building. So anyway, I go up front and find Mark trying to educate himself via the YouTube school of hard knocks. What the hell are you doing? I'm watching YouTube. On your computer at work? Yeah, because yeah, I'm trying to figure out why a fan clutch is used on a 2.3 not on the water pump it's used on the it's used down here on that idler it's i was trying to figure all that out you're not a mechanic I, obviously I, oh i have asked yeah you can say that again <laughs> you know what, what buckwheat's right about you no no he's not listen he, i don't know how much my parts bill is but i'm afraid that by the time this whole thing's over i'm gonna owe you money yeah oh my god that's what i'm afraid of oh how much are you paying it's that attorney? Cool enough. Well, we're still in negotiations. So, have you watched the video yet? I have. I saw it. Did you see what that clutch does? I, that's the first time I've ever seen that do that. Well, it's making more horse pressure now. Is that what it is? It's a, <laughs> I think it's just sucking the clutch flat or something. I don't know. It's spinning so fast. Listen, so, between that clutch and that dump truck shifter you've got Yeah, in you made fun of that too. I, I can't help that, because I think I've tried at one time to put a short throw shifter, but it hits the seat. That was my problem. That's why I had that big long thing, so. so yeah, you, it's, I don't know. I'll have, uh, to, I'll have to cut the seat out, I'll have to butcher it. Maybe it's time for an automatic. You think so? Maybe you should talk to your attorney. You've also got other problems carburetor problems. Well, I, I figured that. Those are not the best choice. Okay? They're not? No. They, oh. No. no. They sit the on there sideways the and they only have idle mixture screws on the primary side of the carburetor, which makes it idle terrible, yeah. no matter what you do. It's never idle quite right. So. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a large part See, of it. I didn't know that. So. The other part is, who taught you how to adjust carburetors? Well, I, it's, I'm self-taught. So... This whole thing between Mark and Buckwheat is escalating like the Cold War between the United States and Russia. And I figure this Turbo 400 I found laying in the back of Mark's shop is gonna go over like the Cuban Missile Crisis. You got Mark wondering what Jeremy's doing. He's wondering what you're doing to the motor. Then I go over to drop parts. Jeremy's getting me in the middle of it. He's like, gotta stop real quick, look at this. I'm like, what am I looking at? I gotta get back to the shop. He goes, oh, just one second, opens a box. He goes, this is what I call the chumpy stompers. And it was his heads. Oh. So he's already saying he's gonna stomp Chumpy. So with me being in the middle of this, I'm just relaying messages back and forth. So it's just been chaos. So you see what I got back here? I see it. Yeah. Where'd so, that come from? Well, it's one I've had at the training shop for a couple of years. It's yeah. been sitting there waiting on me to pick up. So. It just so happens it appears today. It does. You've so. been plotting and scheming. No, me and my attorney haven't done any such thing. <laughs> but if my, if my attorney says we need to swap, I'm ready to go. So. <laughs> So tell Tanner. So, anyway. Yeah, you're definitely going to owe me some money by the time this is Yeah, done. I know. Oh, my God. Now, you remember what Tyler said to me as soon as I walked in the store this morning about him being the best there is at making hydraulic hoses? Tyler just told me he's the best one here at making hydraulic hoses. Yeah, well, he's, he's something. He's good at making the damn mess, too, so...
So after I got done down at Mark's, I had a few errands I needed to run, one of which includes a pit stop up at the House of Pearls. For one thing, I want to stop in and check on Mom and Dad's 55, and I've also got a hood in the back of the El Camino that I need to drop off up there for Tony and Tess. Evidently, while they had their Mustang out in California over the winter, the hood got into a fight with the garage door opener, and the garage door opener won. So Paul's going to make some needed repairs to the hood and repaint it so that when Tony and Tess come out, it's ready to bolt back on. So progress yes the well, doors are back on yep yep we popped those on today so everything's fitting really nicely looks like you've got the top of the car blocked we did we blocked the roof too so there's a couple little dings in there looks like the the dash been sanded we did yeah, okay dash, so that's ready to paint um so i'll probably paper that before i um, go through because it's still going to have multiple rounds of primer so i'm not going to do any more paint other than the underside until i'm done with primer so Dude, it looks body like this is about perfect, but I want it perfect or as close to perfect as you can get. That's me word, but you can get them pretty close. So, working. Dude, it looks like it fits really, really well. It does. And you haven't done any body work on the door. No. Nope. Nope. It's just primered. Just primer. Yep. So it's got a couple little things in it that we're going to get um, pushed out with uh, paintless fat removal. So it makes helps. it pretty incredible. I mean, even though that's just a satin, you can definitely see every little dent. Yeah, and especially when you block it. Like, it really oh, helps yeah. to be able to see. Like, I, you have, like, three lows in this whole roof, and it's right here. Huh. So you can kind of see the dark spots. Yeah, that's where it's low. Yep. Yep, they're little moon dents, moon-shaped dents. Pretty incredible. Yep, she's getting there. Got the deck lid back on. Still need your latch for here because Jesse broke your original latch. It okay. Just, it ripped. The metal just ripped out. Huh. Okay. Um, but we'll, so we need a trunk latch. Yep. But then once that, and then it, some dialing in too. So this gap's a little too wide for my liking, but we'll get it. It looks pretty damn decent to me. It's pretty damn decent. You you do understand? I'm not that picky. I know. I know. I really, I'm but really not. I, I get it. I get <laughs> and it. And it's black, man. It's going to be so nice when it's done. Like, all the pickiness is really going to make a difference. So, it's all that detail stuff that kind of adds up in the end. I'm excited. Now it's starting to look like a car again. Like, every time I come back, it's getting closer and closer to being, you know, assembled. There's okay. pieces being installed instead of taken apart. <laughs> yep. I know. That's always the scary part seeing things get chopped up especially when you don't know how it, it goes all back together you know so, now why did you guys mask up the inside of the car i just didn't feel like dealing with the dust so it gets in every little nook and cranny and like mm -hmm. painting that inner trunk jam mm -hmm. i could go out there and blow it out for an hour and there's You're still, still gonna, gonna have gonna dust. Be some stuff yeah yep so i like to do that because it kind of helps for the pockets so i meant to put a piece of tape right here to stop anything from going down inside the quarter panels when I was blocking the roof, but it's going to be very minor and I'm going to vacuum it and stuff, but basically it just helps. So it keeps it a little cleaner. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. So I need to get you some body mounting hard hardware, yes, the bolts. The bolts. Yep. Bolts okay. and nuts, if I'm not mistaken. I think it takes nuts as well. Okay. Jesse would be the one to... All right. So I need to get a body hardware kit yep. to mount the body back to the chassis. Because yep. right now it's just got temporary yes, bolts. We just have, I think it's four. I think he just has the two up front and two in the back. Okay. So and I think they're not the captive nuts. Yeah, yeah. Just the bolt in with the nuts. So we need that hardware. I need to get you a trunk mat. You mentioned yes. that. Yep. And uh, what else? Oh, the deck lid. The deck lid latch. The latch, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The latch. I was going to order that because Jesse broke it. I mean, I know it's old, but yeah, yeah, we yeah. did break it. I'll I'll uh, I'll look into that when I get home. I've got some stuff I need to get ordered anyway, so uh, I'm really excited. This is starting to come together now. It is. I'm getting pretty excited too. All right, guys. So we dropped off the hood at the body shop for Tony and Tess, and now we're headed to the machine shop. I've got Jeremy's brand new Trick Flow uh, double hump casting 200 cc heads in the back of the El Camino for Bob to use on Jeremy's short block. He's got that 327 up there. We're planning on putting a blower on it. I've also got another little special thing for you today. Uh, I had a friend of mine reach out to me last week from Oklahoma. A friend of mine who has his own YouTube channel and his own uh, machine shop. 
He specializes in porting and flow bench testing cylinder heads and intake manifolds. The guy's name is Eric Weingartner. He has a YouTube channel called Eric Weingartner Racing. And Eric just so happened to be in town because he went to Cleveland and picked up uh, a 408 Ford Dino Mule engine that he's going to take back to Oklahoma and use it to dyno test heads and intakes and things like that. But he also brought with him an engine that he asked if we could put on the dyno here at Bob's. It's a 496 cubic inch big block Chevy street engine, hydraulic roller cam, and it's got trick flow heads. Now this thing is very similar, very, very similar to the 496 engine that Bob and I are just about ready to pull the trigger on and assemble as a giveaway engine for my channel. It's gonna be 496 inches, pump gas, but it's gonna have trick flow 320 heads on it and an ISKI hydraulic roller cam. So when Eric mentioned that he had a 496 street motor with a hydraulic roller that he'd be interested in putting on the dyno while he's here in Ohio, I said, sign us up. We definitely like to compare some notes. We're getting ready to build our own 496 in the coming weeks. So here we go. Let's go up and see Bob, check in with him, see how they're doing up here at the dyno, and meet Eric. If you haven't ever watched this channel, I think you're gonna enjoy this. Now, Eric's been doing YouTube for a little while now, but it's not his main source of income. Mainly, he works on cylinder heads and intake manifolds and films back-to-back -back dyno comparisons. And today, he plans on dyno testing every one of these carburetors on a 496-inch big block Chevy dyno mule with Trick Flow 280 cylinder heads and an out-of-the-box Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake manifold. Now, according to Eric, this 496 that he's putting on Bob's dyno today is a 10 and a half to one compression pump gas engine. Now, I've mentioned I'm interested in the results on this because Bob and I are getting ready to build our own 496 pump gas giveaway engine. In fact, Bob's already started on it and he plans on putting it together as soon as we finish up Jeremy's 327. By the time I got up to the machine shop, Bob was topping off the fuel cell in the dyno room with some Fuel Factory F12 112 octane race gas, which is totally overkill for the compression ratio on this engine, but we plan on putting it on pump gas and trying a few different carburetors on it, like this ATM 1050. So what has it made so far? About 700? 698. 698. And this is the first time we've tested an ATM carburetor on it? That is correct. This is Bob's what is it, 1,000 or 1050? 1050. It's a 1050 4150 carburetor. Let's see what this thing does. This is Uncle Bob's favorite carburetor. Good time today, boys. <laughs> Dude, that's impressive. That carburetor we've never made a change to. We've literally never done anything to it. We just bolted on everything and run it the way it is. And it's always made good power. Look how that thing takes off, and it does that with every carburetor. That's not just the ATM. That's every one of them's that's been that the way. Engine. That's the engine. That's incredible, man. I mean, that's really good power. Power. That is really good power. And we're only turning at what, 6,100, 6,200? Yeah, 6,100. 6,100 RPM. Hydraulic roller, street motor, 10 and a half to one compression. So, I'm wow. taking that number four. The it does have solid lifters on it. They're tight latched. Oh, really? Solid oh, there's lifters. something there. Yeah. <laughs> I knew something was happening there. I just couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm comparing that number four to that last one we've done. So that's one, the 2000. Yeah, pieces. so the one that's up here is the last one, the 703. Wow, you did gain a lot. That's incredible. Same CFM too, that's amazing. Huh? That's the same CFM carburetor, but that one made more power. What's, uh, which carburetor did you have that was better? Th or the so the first one you started with, yeah. it was a Pro Systems, the first one we started with. And what, how big is it? 1050. It's a 1050? That's the same size. What did what did that one make? 
Uh, that one made 698 and 704. This one made 704 and 715. Ooh. That 715's impressive. Yes, it is. And that's no funny business. No carburetor spacer, no nothing. And just an open spacer. That's not even a taper. Wow. We'll put that super sucker on there. You want to try it? All right. Holy smokes. <laughs> I'm going to turn this pump on. <laughs> We're having fun today, bro. <laughs> What? Oh my god! 709, 710, 712. Gee, but Christmas. That's making me want a big block in a bad way. <laughs> they are addicted. Dude, that was a good day. Uh, very tiring, but yeah. Very good. tiring. <laughs> yeah, you got an early start. Yeah. All of you did. What do you think of Bob's dyno? Pretty decent? I like it. I like the dyno. It's very consistent, it I feel really like. Helpful. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And that thing made really good power. Yeah, what was the power. best? 700 and... 711. 711. 711, 711. Wow. And, and that was on pump gas, wasn't it? Yeah, that was pump gas. It actually beat the uh, 110. So that was kind of funny. Yeah, so the compression ratio that that engine has, what did you say it was? 10 and a half to 1? Yeah, but I think he's wrong on that one because I know he'd said that, but I forgot these heads, these trip flow heads, they have a 113cc chamber, so I think it's actually like 11 to 2. Okay. Um, huh. But yeah. That's pretty shocking then, because you know typically with a low compression engine, you're running on race gas, and you're and you're at 38 degrees on a big block like that. That's pretty. That's pretty conservative timing. So when you take race gas out and you put pump gas in, that's effectively like turning the timing up. Well, it was a good but day. I will say that ATM 1050 gas. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good yes, it is. That carburetor has been on almost everything you've ever fired up in here, Bob. 355 to a... 53? Yeah, to a 540. Yeah. And it's made really good power on everything. Like, it's been at the top percentile for on horsepower. Everything. Yeah, on everything. And that's the one carburetor we've never touched. Mm -hmm. We've literally never... I don't we've think we've ever... Need to. No, we've never had a need to. So... Very crisp. Very, very oh, crisp. When, you, when I we give it the, the womp... Yeah. As Jimmy Dale would say, <laughs> it was like, come on, oh, yeah. come on, come on. <laughs> so if you guys want to go subscribe to Mr. Eric's channel, what is it, Eric Weingartner Eric Racing? Wein just Eric Weingartner. Eric Weingartner, okay. Eric Weingartner on YouTube, and he specializes in porting and flow testing and dyno testing, all kinds of, not just GM stuff, like you're doing Ford stuff. and Yeah, actually, we're going to go pick up a Ford uh, short block tomorrow I think and then that'll be the new test meal that we use for Ford stuff so hmm. guys can get a better comparison because the goal is I'll have a small block Chevy that's a 406 the LS is a 408 and I'll have this Ford that's a 408 I'm going to try to put the same camshaft and all huh. and see if the, which family actually makes more power right and, uh, you know just break the internet and get people pissed off <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing that Eric Weingartner on YouTube and you can check him out. He's got all kinds of really good information. I've watched a lot of your videos. There's, there's been a handful of them on there that I have watched multiple times, actually. And uh, I'm really intrigued with this 496 because we're getting ready to build a 496 for a giveaway motor. But ours is going to have the 320 heads. Is that what they are, Bob? Yes. 320s. So they're a little bit bigger than these heads. But, man, this thing runs really good. I'm really impressed with those heads and that combination. I mean, 700 horsepower, 711 on pump gas. My God, really, really good combination. Really impressed with that. Kind of makes me want to build a big block for my Nova, Bob. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for the help. Oh, no problem. Mm -hmm. Holy smokes, man. That thing sounds good. <laughs>